Hi everyone. Here's my little slice of heaven here. That's my bug I drive all the time. But today we're working on the Baja bug. I got the engine all tore to bits in the back here. Had a bit of an issue. And I'll show you what I'm fixing here. We're gonna be working on some heads today. I have these old put these this is the heads from the Baja bug and there's some old wore out wore out heads and the valves wobble pretty good in the guides. Anyways, I got this thing up to 55 miles an hour on the highway and for about two minutes or three minutes or so and that's what happened. That's one of the pistons I took out of it. I've since got a new piston in there and everything's all good as far as the piston. But anyways, I was going to show you how, I was gonna, how I'm going to do a little backyard type of valve guide swap out on this thing. After you get your valve and spring out, you get a 3 8 by 16 tap and tap it in there. You don't even need to use a drill on the valve guide. You need to run the tap down about a half inch. The uh, rocker shaft stud here gets in the way. You can see how close it is here if I turn it around. Anyways, if it gets in the way and you want to crank it down a few more times, you just have to reposition your you know, thing a few times like that and continue on. Finishing up taking it out here. Can't really see the threads, but they're all cut into the guide. And I'll show you the homemade part of this thing that I did here. This is a one inch by three and a half inch steel pipe nipple. Not an actual pipe. If you use a pipe it's too wide, the one inch. Anyways, I got this stuff as low as like a plumbing fitting. Anyways, I ground these threads down so it fit good right where the valve spring would normally go. Here's the other half to this thing. It's a 3 8 by 16 6 inch long carriage bolt. It has a piece of angle iron on it that works like a washer. I tried those washers and they weren't strong enough, they bent. And uh, anyways, I got this mark. You have to put it in about half inch, about as much as the threads go. Anyways, the idea with this thing, there's a washer there. It takes up the, you see. Anyways, you screw this thing into the valve guide, and then you screw the bolt into the valve guide, and then you spin the nut, and that extracts the valve guide out. And of course, where my hand is is where the pipe would be that I just showed you over there. into the black mark that I showed before. So now I'll run the nut in a bit. Once you know the valve guy's moved a little bit, you know, not a bad idea to back it off again. Spray a little WD-40 on it. Make sure you actually crack it up far enough. And it get a little spray. Then you continue get it back down again.
video. Here's your valve guide. Before I take this cylinder head all apart, I want to show you what a worm valve guide looks like and sounds like. You grab it and you try to wiggle it back and forth. See how much that bounces in there? It shouldn't bounce like that. It means the guides are wore out. New guides, if you grab the valve like this with the valve spring off, they won't wiggle around like that. Or clonk around, you can hear it. Clonk around. Anyways, what happens when you, if you run a car with wore out valves, uh, guides like this, is that eventually this wobbles more and more and the end of your valve breaks right off. That's what mine did. The valve broke off and then your, valve, your broken valve is floating as the piston's going up and down in here. It's floating in the combustion chamber. Anyways, my broken valve piece got wedged sideways. Pretty much the worst thing that can happen. It wedged sideways and it destroyed the cylinder head and put a hole in the piston and the valve piece that broke off ended up in my piston that had the hole in it. So yeah, not good. The uh, Just showing you, never, never run a car that has a wobble like that. If you're rebuilding a car, any car, especially a bug, take the valve spring off and give it the wiggle test like that. If it makes noise like this and clonk around, it's not good. If it wiggles like that, you have to get new heads or you got to put new guides in like I am. Here's the cylinder heads taken apart. This cylinder head is a replacement cylinder head that I got for the one I broke. It's a Brazilian cylinder head. This is a German cylinder head. These are the guides that were in the German head. These are the guides that were in the Brazilian head. Now I know the Brazilian head here has had the valve guides worked on before because these valve guides are a bigger diameter than these valve guides. Now uh, let me explain why they sell the bigger diameter valve guides and why guys use the bigger diameter valve guides once they do a valve job on one of these cylinder heads. This is the hole in the cylinder head where the valve guide goes. When guys punch the guides out, a lot of times it leaves a bigger hole here than that, what was originally there. So in order to have the new valve guide fit in there tightly, they use a bigger diameter valve guide. If you were to use a stock original diameter valve guide in that hole, it would be too loose and there would be a chance it would fall out or wobble out or not stick in there properly. So anyways, that's why that's why the bigger diameter valve guides points to the head having work done to it before. And it also shows why you need to measure these things before you buy your new valve guides so you buy the right ones. So let me uh, let me uh, show you the different sizes here. These are the German guides. 76 76 76 and 76. Uh, I look when I was looking for new parts, looking for new valve guides. Seeing how that's kind of the whole point of this effort. Uh, the most common oversized size was 2000s oversize, and that's what three out of the four valve guides are that I have in my Brazilian cylinder head, and then I have one that's a real big oversize. Let me show you the differences in sizes in these. 78. 78. 78. And then this is the real big one. It's like an 85. Something like that. This 85 one is going to be pretty hard to source. I think it's almost 10,000 bigger than the original size valve guide. Anyways, the main thing that I wanted to show on this video, the main point I wanted to hammer home was that you need to measure your old valve guides in order to know which new valve guides you need to buy. I've had some time to look at my 
pictures that I took of my broken engine and I've come to the conclusion that I had a valve spring break and that's what caused my engine failure here not uh, worn valve guides like I originally thought granted these valve guides on this engine are really wore out and it's good that I'm replacing them because they'll probably be a problem in the future but the worn valve guide wasn't guides weren't all of my problem what I think happened when this engine broke was the valve spring broke and then when the valve spring broke the spring retainer fell off and when the valve spring initially broke the push rod and rocker were still attached so this was happening while the engine was still running so what was happening was the uh, valve was opening but there was no springs or anything to close the valve or anything to control the valve on how far it fell into the combustion chamber when it opened so anyways, this valve with the broken spring was hanging way in the combustion chamber. My piston would come to top dead center, and this piston would hit the valve that hang, was hanging way in the combustion chamber. Anyways, it did that multiple times, so the valve hit the piston multiple times. And that eventually caused my valve to break, and when my valve broke, my push rod fell off, and the broken valve piece that broke off, fell in my combustion chamber, and that trashed everything. So that's pretty much what happened here. Here's some of the carnage pictures that I have of the engine. made a little list of my valve guides here. Numbers on the left are the measurements I got when I measured the old valve guides. The numbers on the right are the numbers that they sell all the new valve guides in. So it shows what I bought here. The uh, big one ended up being 8 thousandths oversize that I didn't quite know about. Anyways, those are my numbers. But I'd show everyone. second one. Got them all in without dramas.
There's all the goofy sized bow guides put in the Brazilian head. Just lapping the valves in here. The valve grind compound. You see it on the valve a little bit there. Helps the new valve seal better. This is after we removed the compound. You left with a nice ring around the nice fresh ceiling ring around the valve. Before I put this one together, I want to show you this is the same valve that I showed earlier in the video. This is with new a new valve guide. When you try to wiggle it around, I'm trying to move it around like I did in the, earlier in the video. You see, it doesn't move around, and make noise. And it rides nice and smooth in the bore. It's the way it's supposed to be when you do the wiggle test. Here they are finally done. Finally got all the parts they needed. They're finally all together. I uh I don't know when it happened, but the exhaust valve on this German cylinder head was one of them was ever bent ever so slightly. And you could see uh light coming through here when I shined my this light here in the exhaust port there. And uh Anyways, that was a bummer, so I got a new valve for the German head here, and it, it worked out good. I just wanted to show you that. That was an unexpected, fun little thing that happened. And this is the other side of the Brazilian cylinder heads. You can see the exhaust valves on the Brazilian heads are a little, a little different looking. The divot's a little smaller in the exhaust valve. But anyways, looking forward to seeing if they work.
It's good. Anyways, my little project came out good here. I want to talk about a few things now that I'm finished working on things. First thing I want to talk about is uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of different ways to do things. I'm just a person messing around in my garage here. I'm sure there's a lot better ways to do things for sure. But uh, the bottom line was was this project. Uh, you know, I had a perfectly running engine when I was done. No smoke goes down the highway. I learned a bunch of stuff. I've learned some stuff by doing what I did here, and uh, I saved some money. And of course, I have the pride of doing it myself here. I didn't. I didn't take the cylinder heads anywhere to get worked on. So the project here for me was a big success, and I had a good time doing it. The uh, next thing I want to talk about is these old air-cooled Volkswagen cylinder heads in general. The old air-cooled heads on these Volkswagens have always kind of been known as being kind of a, a sensitive, commonly replaced kind of part. You know, they're always, you know, when they when they wear out, they drop a valve and have kind of issue like an issue like I have here in this video. And when they're not adjusted right, they burn a valve. And they're always kind of been sensitive. They're always kind of tending to the cylinder heads and making sure they're they're good. And that's kind of always how it's been with the uh, you know the air cooled Volkswagens. The the bottom ends of the engines almost always outlast the top ends. And, I'm talking about bottom end, top end. It kind of doesn't work with a Volkswagen because you got your your cylinder heads are on the side and your crankshafts in the middle. But I guess put it another way, the crankshafts almost always outlast the cylinder heads, and that's kind of always how it's been. And that's why there's a lot of places that uh, and companies that manufacture new cylinder heads. And uh, if you, I mean, if you look online, some of the prices of some of these cylinder heads for these little 50 some odd horsepower engines, I mean, it's impressive the amount of amount of money that they get for these cylinder heads. And anyway, that was kind of the kind of it's a good deal for the companies, but of course, not quite as good a deal for the person that owns the car. So uh, that's why I did what I did here. Uh, Money-wise, of course, and I, of course, I enjoyed doing it. Well, that's why I redid this stuff myself. And uh, what I would recommend, if you uh, you want to do this yourself, something similar to what I did here, I would. Uh, I never. I'll talk about how to do it cheaply first, because I never met a Volkswagen person that wasn't cheap. I'll talk about how to do it cheaply and have something functional when you're done. But I would recommend would be get new valve guides. Reuse your old valves if you can. If they're bent, of course, you can't reuse them. And uh, then finally get new valve springs so you don't have a blown up mess like I had here. Of course, the uh, nicer way to do it would be to uh, get new, va new, new valves too. But you don't have to do that, and that kind of goes into the well, what I'm talking about here next. The uh, the there's the valve guides and valve valves themselves. The metals are um, very different. The valve guides are made out of a real soft brass metal, and then the valves themselves are hardened. So it only makes sense that the uh, valve guides are going to wear faster than the valves themselves. So that's why I can recommend, if you want to do this on the cheap, just to do the uh, valve guides. And uh, that's pretty much what I did here on this little uh, this little project. I only replaced the valves that I had to replace that were bent. So anyway, that's my little recommendation if you want to do this yourself as cheaply as possible and still have something work. <laughs> the uh, last thing I want to ramble a little bit about here is my engine on this Baja here. The uh, Everything's made with used parts on this engine. I spent a lot of time collecting parts online and offline and 
I custom made in my intakes so I could work with some of the parts I got and the exhaust and whatnot. And uh, I made the this engine out of used parts, so some part because of the money, but also anyone that's been into uh, old Volkswagens recently knows a lot of the new parts aren't really that great anyways. So when I rebuilt this engine, I figured I'd build, I'd build it mostly out of old stuff. And I did, and it works good. And it's taken a while to make everything work, but I'm pretty much happy with it in the long run, or now. <laughs> But uh, what I wanted to talk about was, I mean, these cylinder heads that I'm working on in this video are actually, they're really old, and they're from my black car here originally. And uh, they're ancient old things, and they were all wore out and everything. And anyways, because everything else was used on my engine here, I figured I'd just stick these um, heads on and run them without even checking anything out. And uh, I did that, and uh, I drove the car around at 45 miles an hour or so on the back roads for, I don't know, probably almost 60 miles, and everything seemed fine. And so because everything was all good one time, I figured I'd, I'd take it up on, on the highway at 55 miles an hour for a little 55 mile hour blast. Only when you're in a Volkswagen, you know what a 55 mile hour blast is. <laughs> but anyways. I took it for a little 55 mile an hour run for about a minute. Everything was fine. Came to a stoplight. Things seemed okay, you know. It's, and uh, I accelerated back up to 55 from the stoplight. Now I was just cresting a hill, and it was just a huge noise. It was just a huge, just, you know, incredible explosion you ever want to hear. And uh, that's when my engine let go, and uh, the engine still ran. It was running on three cylinders like it does. And uh, I got lucky, I got over the hill, and at the bottom of that hill, when I was going downhill after I got up over the crest, <laughs> the, uh, that's where my uh, development is, at the bottom of the hill. So anyways, I put it in neutral, and it was still running while the whole time I was running down the hill. It was running really bad, like I showed. With the <laughs> and uh, anyways, I got it into the development, and once, it, once I turned it into the the housing development is shut down, my engine locked right up, and uh, I had to tow the car here and fix this mess that uh, I have in this video. So anyways, the main reason for that little story there was if you are using used, so used cylinder heads on your uh, old air-cooled Volkswagen, don't be like me, don't, don't just throw them on and think that they're fine and run them because you'll at, there's a chance you'll end up with a blown up engine like I did and it was a real real pain cleaning up that engine I mean all the debris from all those parts that crashed together and made a mess it was just a mess so just just don't 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 do that what I recommend for sure if you had or if you buy a used head for your Volkswagen get yourself one of these valve spring compressors Take everything apart, make sure the valves don't wobble, make sure you put new valve springs in. At least do that before you run your used cylinder heads that you have, so you don't end up with a blown up engine like I did in this video. So uh, that's pretty much it, that's my uh, Jerry Springer show style final thought for this little uh, valve guide episode.